Hello and welcome to another live Paper Pioneer game in the Old Emo Dave YouTube channel, live at Firestorm Games. I am John, I'm with my partner Jay, and we got two actually competitive decks this time around, Jay. Probably a yeah, first for the channel. Like have... Hey, there have been competitive decks before, but <laughs> yeah, usually it's jank week, but this week is certainly not jank. We've got Ractor, Sack on one time, and Spirits. On the other, what what colors is the, the spirits player? I believe is playing Azorius, blue white. Kind of kind of has that splash for spell queller, which is a very prominent spirit in this kind of, especially in this kind of meta where you sort of have sort of lower CMC cards you want to deal with. Well, four and below at least. Shouldred being one of the big ones, right? Yeah, Shouldred. Uh, another big one is also Supreme Verdict. Oh, yeah. Because it doesn't counter. It exiles the mm -hmm. spell. Removes it from the stack. And also in games two and three, you've got things like um, Brotherhood's End and Path of Pell and other sweepers that Falcoella can pick up, which is quite nice. Mm. And the opponent for our Azoria Spirits is... Rakdos? Jun? Yeah, so, so I think it's just Rakdos. They've got Giganto as a companion. Yeah. It's basically it's basically Rakdos midrange uh, at this point. I believe it's got Blood Hive. I believe it's got... Sorry, Blood Tithe. And I believe it's got Fable. But instead of the other accompaniments of the Rakdos midrange list, uh, it instead has, you know, Cat and Oven, Claim the Firstborn, so and most importantly, Mayhem Devil. So, so it's not really a mid-range list, Jay. This is the Sacrifice deck. Yes, I know, but essentially at its core, they, they operate in very similar ways. If you've watched the Mirror Match, you'll see that um, they're, they're very similar when they play against each other. Uh, they, 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 I, might, I, they might seem I, that way, but I don't know. I just don't that. <laughs> so the four copies of Blood Tide Harvester and four copies of Fable mean that most games do start very similarly. You know, with I mean, Rakdos mid-range and Rakdos sack. Oh, I don't know. I I mean, one one is literally the worst thing to ever play against on Arena, and the other one is also the worst. I guess they're both just awful to play against, right? Um, on Arena, <laughs> Rakdos, Sack, Rakdos Sack is definitely the worst to play against because they have so many triggers that they hold mm. priority with. Yeah. All right. Our our biases against Rakdos aside, the players are now have opened have now drawn their opening hands, and looks like the Spirit player has gone first, opting to just play Island Pass. Now Spirits have... Yeah, it, it's likely of... that they'll play Spectral Sailor at the end step. Mm. Oh, or nothing. Oh, kept the, land, kept the hand with no one-drops from the looks of it. No, I think uh, they, they might have a one-drop, but they are choosing to be able to protect it because they have things like slip out the back. I so do see a slip out the back on the side there. But yeah, with the oven exactly. down. Oh, and another pass. So they might be playing something at instant speed here. I'll be, I'll be surprised if they if they play a slow game because Rakdos sacrifice. If you let them get going, it's quite difficult to come back. I mean, this is the kind of deck where just cat and oven alone kind of just goes like, and already the, the engine is right there, and this is such a self-contained combo. The witch. Which is oven and the black cat. Yeah, it where... can be it can be stopped. Um, you know, with graveyard hate, exile effects. You, you you do have to time things in a certain way. You have to do things like in response to triggers. Um, mm. uh, here we see the petty theft bouncing the what? Witch's oven. There we go. And they're choosing to sacrifice the cat and create a food because there's there's no downside really. They can now. If they want to sacrifice the food and get the cat back at any time. Yeah. And this is one of the things where Cat Oven does really well. It's, it's a near, like, if you don't have the answer to it, it is near, it is basically unstoppable. Like, the oven is still in hand. Like, imagine if there was, like, a revoke existence. I know, it's a bit of a strange card to have day, game one, but, like... Yeah, I don't know. Spirit sort of deals with this outside of just generating a board presence and then just overwhelming the Rakdos mid-range player, right? 
True. I mean, um, Ragdos Sack, the, the cat, at this point, it's only a one, well, I guess two life swing because they gain a life and deal a damage every turn, which mm. the smooth player should easily be able to outrace. And unlike most decks, um, the, the cat can't make any free blocks against spirits because they're pretty much all flying. Um, so I believe that it's just it should just be a case of racing, and I think they might be getting down um, Frozen Borrower at the end step, which is a 3 1 flyer and will outrace the cat and oven. Mm. Well, as, as much as I would like to believe that, the Spirits player has played zero creatures so far. If this is going to be a rattle chains, there we go. And they have cool. the slip out the back in hand. Yeah, uh, the triggers on the stack. Slip out in response. So a lot of triggers going off, but a 3-2 flying spirit that gives everything flash. It's not bad. It's not bad in this position. Yeah. A 3-2 a, a is enough of a clock to beat the cat and oven on its own. Mm. Whereas, but the cat and oven is essentially a two life, a one life uh, gain every time. So... I'm not entirely sure. One one is able to gain life, whereas the spirits player isn't gaining life at all. Yeah, but the 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 cat can only swing two life points on its own each turn. You know, they make the opponent lose a life and they gain a life. Whereas the rattle chain is swinging three life every turn by hitting for three. So it will outrace the cat, or all, all, mm. all else equal. Yeah, and and I believe that the spirits player must be holding some sort of counter spell. Or protection for this rattle chains. Ooh, is it going to be another rattle chains to protect it? Hmm. Ooh, no, they just. He I'm surprised. He does let it go. This is interesting. So there's it, a there's another card that he's more worried about. Yeah, it looks like they have a spell crawler in the hand, and I think they're more worried about mayhem devil. Hmm. And so they're choosing to keep spell crawler for may mayhem devil. But I think now they're just they're just deciding that they'll. Spellqueller, the unlucky witness. And uh, quite unlucky for that witness. Oh, but a claim the firstborn, second main. Which is a big blowout. They get they get an extra food and they're mm. able to pass the unlucky witness. Yeah. And all this during the sacrifice player's turn. It's, no, it's I, a bit of a strange sequencing, like would yeah, you I'm, have thought... I'm really not sure about the Spirits player's game plan here. I, I personally, whenever I play Spirits against Sacrifice, I you just have to go as fast as possible. Mm. Uh, you, you just have to get enough creatures. Because with their life gain, if they may able to get the life gain, it's quite hard to come back from that. Yeah. And again, he's just passing the turn. Yeah, th this is turn five or six, and and we can see the Raptor Sack player is still at a very very healthy twenty. That yeah. there needs to be some more pressure here. Mm. And it looks I like mean, they have a ma mausoleum wanderer in their hand, and I'm not sure why they they've waited so long to play that. Mm, that mausoleum wanderer may have been the difference in certain plays in this game. It might have taken out another removal spell at least, but at least it would have taken the turn and the brazen borrower is being flashed in a three two so that cannot be um a, a three one um which is a quite significant difference than a three two because a three one means it can be killed very very easily if a mayhem devil were to come down it can but it cannot be killed by fatal push at least currently uh, well well it's very easy to get revolt as a um as a Rakdos sacrifice deck. Yeah. Speaking of which, we got oh, and this a Geistling Snare. Good. So because they have a creature with flying, Geistling Snare costs one less to cast, I believe. Oh no, no, no. no. Geistling Snare. No, it needs three, to be a it? spirit. Yeah. yeah sorry. It needs to be a spirit or an enchantment. I which... mean, still, that they're at they're at ten life. Uh, they'll go down mm. to eight if the Rakdos sack player attacks for two, which they are. They'll go down to yeah. seven with the oven. Mm. I, I don't I don't see them winning that race. It looks like there's a fable of the mirror breaker in the Rakdos sacrifice player's hand, which is just more damage that will come. 
Mm, he is contemplating the best move here. And to be fair, two mana. Oh, he's pa he decided to pass back the turn. I'm not sure about that. Maybe maybe he's scared of a counter. Maybe he thinks he's going to win the race anyway. I mean, in this position, I think he can, right? The the Brazen Borrower cannot block creatures without flying. So kind of neither, neither creature in this position can block, and the cat will just increment damage constantly. Uh, with the and also, at any, at any time, if the Raptor Sack player wants extra cards, they can sacrifice the Unlucky Witness to see mm. two extra cards. Oh, and another cat. And a second cat. Will this get counted, though? Nope. That looks like it's getting into it. And the fact of sacrifice by up to 17. Again, this is why I think you really have to be quick mm. when it comes to playing against Racto Sacrifice. The, their worst matchups are mono red. Really, yeah. And and it, really aggressive matchups because they just take a while to set up. Mm. Oh, and a spectral sailor coming down. And a draw off the spectral sailor's ability. So they've got a lot of cards in hand. Uh, oh, the secret goes off the top. Not looking good. The the spirits player is drawing m too many lands in this position, not enough action, and they are actually Agreed. just dead next turn. Oh, and they scoop. Yeah. Yeah. Um. The the spirits player, I believe that they don't play any skyclave apparition, uh, mm. unlike the bant list. And I believe in against Rakdos sack that skyclave apparition is just so good. Being able to hit the oven is massive um potentially they'll have some portable holes or something in the sideboard and yeah. they'll be able to bring those in for the oven or potentially just other bits of removal it looks like they brought in two unlucky witness and two rest in peace Ooh, rest in peace a very strong card and i mean if you're playing white it's a card very much available to you in this position the rakdos sack play there I'm not entirely sure what their cyborg plan is, right? Sort of game I, one I seemed think, to go pretty well for them. I think they'll have things like rending volley. Mm -hmm. Those are usually good cards to bring in. I, I, I'm not really sure what else. I, I, I wasn't looking that way, so I, I didn't catch what they're bringing in. But no doubt, over the course of the next game or so, we, we might see it. Yeah. Well, one of the strangest things is like spirits is one of those decks that dies quite hard to removal. Kind of the bane of any kind of tempo strategy is if you deal with the pressure at any point, doesn't matter how many counter spells the Spirits player has up, they can't hit you back. It's sort of a mute point, right? Yeah, agreed. Yeah, Spirits does lose to removal, but especially the Ragdoll Sack deck has a lot of two-for-one removal. Claim the Firstborn mm. into a deadly dispute or into an oven or into even just attacking for damage. Uh, is is brutal. In, in, a lot of times, what can happen for the Spirits player is they play, you know, a turn one, one drop, a turn two, you know, a curious obsession, and the Ragdoll Sack player just claims the Firstborn and gets to, you know, deal damage, draw an extra card, and then just remove it. Mm. I mean, the, I don't know the. If the Spirits player plays exactly the same as he did game one, and I think that was another point that you made that I agree with, was that I think he was playing far too passively. Yeah, I think he's he, he's too afraid of Mayhem Devil because his deck has no main board way to answer it once it comes down. You know, tapping mm. Mayhem Devil does nothing. Uh, I believe yeah. that's what the Unlucky Witnesses are being brought in for. Hmm. Um, I didn't see them bring in Aethergust. Um, Aethergust can hit quite a few things. Fable, Blood Tithe, Gigantha, Mayhem Devil, but potentially they, they just don't want to overboard and they know that they, they still need to apply pressure and they can't play the control game against Ragdoll Sacrifice. In fact, I believe no, Ragdoll Sacrifice is, is quite favoured against um, the control matchup. Yeah, because a lot of their important pieces sort of comes down so early that doesn't matter what you can control cat ovens it, when when cat oven is live it's live it will it if it has to be a 20 turn clock it will be a 20 turn clock you know yeah yeah exactly and, and they can't remove it that they try supreme verdict and they're like okay i sack my cat in response they try to fateful absence it and they just say okay i sack my cat in response 
Mm. Um, it's just so hard to get rid of, rid of. If you try marching it, they just sacrifice their count in response. You have to march it after all of that items have been tapped. Yeah. Well, one one thing one thing to think about in like I know the spirit player is going first, and depending on their opening hand, but would it be worth mulling for that? Rest in peace. The thing is, is rest in peace sounds amazing against Agro Sack. You think that they play huge graveyard synergies, but really, it's not it's, it's not even that good, you know, because they have Blood Tide Harvester, they have Fable, they have Mayhem mm-hmm. Devil. You know, sacrifice effects still happen even if rest in peace uh, exiles them. Yeah. So it Ooh. does stop the main engine of Cat and Oven. Yes, the cat does get exiled and so can't come back. But I, I don't think it does enough to completely stop the Rakdos Sacrifice player, especially if they can get down some, you know, early beats in Blood Tide Harvester Fable. Uh, it looks like the Spirits players have a much faster start this game. Yeah, speaking of early beats, now we, we see that turn one mausoleum into the turn two. And this, depending on how many more Spirits are in the deck, and here's the Blood Tide Harvester, depending on, yeah, like... It- how many other cards are in the deck? The Spirits player is just going to win on just turn one, turn two, turn three tempo, right? Yeah, and it's not a bad idea. I, I, I don't see why not. I mean, that is what Spirits is meant to do at the end of the day. Mm. It's a slightly slower game. We, we see the lack of the oven and the cat, which I think was very prominent. Oh, and an unlucky... And an, was this? It's an unlucky un- witness. What, what's it called? Witness protection, protection that's it. Witness yes, it makes it a 1-1 one, one green and white green citizen, well, green and white citizen, uh, and it loses all abilities. So it can't remove anything now, so it just becomes a 1-1. One, one. I'm not entirely sure about using that, because Blood Tide is not the scariest of cards, but it does but, mean that you will be winning the race. Mm. And it does sort of turn this creature into just a, a, one, a vanilla 1-1, one, one, right? So we can't use it for removal. It can be an oven target, but then... Oh, and there's a second one. Oh, and a Geist Light Snare. And because he has an enchantment, it only costs one mana. Yeah, and one thing that we see is the Sack player has a Fable in the hand, and they were afraid to play it because of the counter spells. Mm. Um, and, and, you know, I, I'm not sure the correct route there, whether to play it into the counter spell or not. But it just shows that the Spirits player, even if they didn't have a counter spell there, them holding up mana made the Rakdos player play differently than they would. Oh, and yeah. here we see Portable Hole. Oh, for, catch in the oven. 11. I could be wrong. It may not have been Rest in Peace that was brought in. It may have been Portable Hole instead, which would make sense because it's very good for getting rid of the oven. Hmm. It's, it's kind of... It's kind of similar than playing red right and your option is just board in a braids right because dealing with the oven does shut down some of the main synergies of the deck well yeah the oven is not just for the cat the oven kills unlucky witnesses to get more card draw the Mm. oven can get you revolt which is important for fatal push and the oven can also kill things that have been claimed the first born yeah oh man this is a Bit of a long, bit of a long turn, but one one of the things you got to appreciate with Rakdosak is the different kind of play patterns that can kind of emerge. Oh, and here we see another Blood Tide Harvester get countered by another Geist Light Snare. But I think I think this is just a play, right? Look look at the amount of cards in the Spirit Player's hand versus the Rakdosak players, right? Yes, they are behind in damage, but but. They're able to just keep on... And there's a Shouldred's Edict. Yeah, so I believe that they're going to have to sacrifice a creature, either Mausoleum Wanderer or Shacklegeist. I, I'm really not sure on the correct play here. Maybe Mausoleum Wanderer? Because mm. the Ragdo Sack player has gotten to enough land where Mausoleum Wanderer probably won't be able to counter anything anyway. I uh, I believe Mausoleum Wanderer was used to... <laughs> was used to counter the Shouldred's Edict. Ah, Yes. <laughs> I mean, you might as well, right? Well, technically, <laughs> no, never mind. I, I was just about to say that would dodge a Mayhem Devil uh, force sacrifice, but it wouldn't. It would still trigger no. because you have to sacrifice the Mausoleum Wanderer to counter it. Mm. 
And the thing is, the Spirits player, despite having a lot of pressure earlier, I believe the Rakdos sack player is now stabilized. Yeah, the Spirits player really needs a, a counter or at the be you know the very best thing, a spell queller here to counter the Fable. Fable mm. Goblin token plus you know this harvester even though it's a one one it has dealt some damage it will make a difference at some point it's uh it it has been a clock from its iteration and another thing is we will we will we notice is that the spirits player did not have their um what's that enchantment that draws a card every time they deal combat damage yeah curious obsession or combat yeah. research is a new one or i believe they might even be playing one Staggering Insight, which is the Azorius one, that also gives, one that gives you with lifelink as well, yeah. yeah. But the lack of that, then we just see like spirits. Where's the card draw outside of that now, right? Yeah, it looks like they just have two lands in hand. One of those is an Iganjo, which will help. Mm. But this is this is not looking good for spirits at all. No, and they can dig with Babel Chapter Two now, yeah. and they're just uh, deciding uh, which is the best cards. Yeah, it looks like they might have a Mayhem Devil in hand. And if they play a Mayhem Devil, they could potentially loot with Blood Token and sacrifice a Treasure Token to deal with the Shacklegeist. Mm. Which may be a play just because the Shacklegeist will... It, it is going to kill the Vector Sack player eventually. You know, four more turns. It's, it's not forever away. It's quite soon. Yeah, and this is attacking for three. And we, we do know about the Aganjo. I'm guessing it would be the goblin, right? If any, if any token was gonna get killed, right? Yeah, there's no reason to kill the the one one. Especially since the enchantment does actually help with Geist Light Snare. Yeah, and, and now with an empty hand, they're able to play Mayhem Devil. But will they see the play of? Oh, they can't use the Blood Token. No, because they don't. They, they have to discard play... a card from yeah, the hand. I, I think they chose to play a land. Mm. Oh, now they're able to get Giganta into their hand, which is, you know, another thing about this deck is that in the long game, it can it can get there. You know, G Giganta is a huge presence. The five five is quite a fast clock. Mm. And here's the thing: the the two two is gonna die. So with he could sack the blood token and he can sack the treasure in order to just deal ping two damage. I think they're they're trying to figure out whether the reflection copying blood tithe makes uh, copies it as a citizen, which I believe it doesn't. I believe it just copies it as blood tithe, but I could be wrong. Yeah. So so it's only while it's enchanted that it is a one one. The card itself still remains as blood tithe harvester. Mm. Uh, the fable does the reflection. Sorry, does have summoning sickness, so it won't be relevant this turn, but it will certainly be relevant next turn. Also. Reflection, the token sacrificing itself at the end of the turn is quite relevant mm. with a Mayhem Devil on the board. Yeah. But what what is... But, like, the Spurs player has kept the card in hand. Could be protection. Um, they don't have enough to activate their Hall of the Storm Giants as of yet. We know of the Giganta in hand. That could just get dropped and put the Spurs player in a very rough position. Oh, and a Den of the Bugbear... That's good for, for, for pushing damage. Oh, mm. and they're just having to play a Spell Queller at the end of the turn. That that would not have dealt with the Gigantha. No, no, but potentially they were hoping for something else. Spell mm. Queller blocking Blood Tide would have stopped, you know, one damage from going through. Ooh, a Curious oh, Obsession. That is, there we go, some card draw. That is six damage, but he can deal with the 2-2 two, two at damage? infant speed. Isn't that it, only it five is damage? Damage right now. Um, no, oh, so two, three in it. <laughs> yes, it's only five damage, so it's one away, and and I I believe the the sack player is so close to just having lethal. Mm. Oh, and they are they are, they have decided to kill the two two in response. And they just they just passed the turn, right? Hmm. Uh, the Ragnar Sack player hasn't... Had, oh, no. Why did they draw a card? Oh, from the Blood Token. My bad. Yeah, from the Blood Token. Oh. So now it's is. another card for the Spirit That's player. It. And, oh. Spirit player concedes here. Interesting. 
Oh, I guess because he can copy the um, Blood Tithe Harvester. Yeah, yeah, no, no, he can copy the Mayhem Devil. That would be the big thing, right? And then, oh, yeah. And, and then even at the end of the turn, sacrificing that. I, I believe that was enough damage. I, I believe the Spirit Tithe calculated that. Oh, and this, this sack deck is... I think this is a bad matchup for Spirits overall. There, there's some um, because Rakdos Sack just generates so much sort of incremental advantage, right? And this is what I mean by where play patterns are quite important. Whereas the Spirits player is just hoping to deal with one big thing at a time, just keep the pressure up, which they were able to, but I don't think they were able to draw enough creatures to benefit from that. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not sure what happened there. Why they weren't able to draw all of the creatures. That, that they wanted to draw, and it just it, it it. I think the spirits player got quite unlucky. It did seem like their draw was not the most optimal. Yeah, well, good game for the Rakdos sack player. Unlucky for the spirits player. I believe, yeah. Hopefully, well, uh, the spirits player. Oh, there was a Gobakan in that deck. Bruh, that Gobakan would have been huge. Anyway, would have. Anyway, right. um, that's us. I'm John, my partner Jay, and yeah.